Hi, I'm Mai Mai. Welcome back to another video in the series of converting our patio to a three-season sunroom or multi-purpose room. In our last video, we talked about the floor, footing, and joist sizes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to hang joists using this joist hanger. And this joist hanger is pretty cool. As you can see, all of these joists are attached to these beams using these joist hangers. So the purpose of a joist hanger is to fix joists to beams if you can't you, if you can't screw the joists in from the outside. In our case, normally we would secure them from this side, but we can't access that side. And if we're building it up against the side of a house, we're not going to be able to put any screws on this side because we're securing the uh, I guess in this case the deck. To the house on this side. So the purpose of a joist hanger is to secure a joist from the inside. Normally you would secure a joist from the outside, this is for securing it on the inside. Alright so as you can see we already have most of the joist hangers set up and that's because my dad has been working on making sure that they're uh, pretty much everything is set because he wants to get this project done as soon as possible. And you know, I, I, learned C, I learned civil engineering in school, but I don't get the real experience. And of course, he uses this project of building this patio to give me an actual hands-on experience building and doing civil engineering. And in our case, this is actually our last chance to do it because after, after we have this last joist hanger up, there's not going to be another chance to uh, talk about joist hangers. Okay, so talking about the joist hanger, yeah, we want to make sure that our joists are flush with the top of our beams. And uh, as you can see here, they're not quite uh, flush. But the idea is to find a way to make sure that we can achieve that flushness. And one of the ways that my dad's tried is to create a contraption sort of like this. And it has the same shape as a 2 by 8 just for comparison and the joist hanger should fit right under it. The way that it's supposed to work is that it's at the right, it's supposed to be at the right height so that when you put the joist hanger on and you knock it into place, hold on. By the way, the, this pin right here, this elbow, is a sort of pin that you knock in to secure this in place. This is temporary so that you can take a screw. You can take a screw or a nail. They actually recommend using a nail because the screw will break. You take a screw or a nail and you put it into these holes to secure the joist hanger. Now, the problem with this contraption here is that my dad has used this contraption for his previous joist hanger jobs. And if we take a look at them, some of them are okay. But you'll notice that this one's not flush. This one's definitely not flush. All of these are not flush. Uh, you know, the problem with the contraption is that it, the, the execution of the job really depends on how perfect your contraption is. And in our case, the contraption was not that perfect, which meant that it left the uh, joist actually crooked. You can see on the level right here, the bubble is not um, in the center, even though it's aligned perfectly with the side of this joist, which indicates that the contraption was itself a crooked. So that means that we have to find a different way to secure the joist hanger, because we want to make sure that the tops of these joists are flush with the beams. But we also want to make sure that it's not crooked and that they're in the right position. So, my dad came up with a very cool method, and it's right behind me. Can you guess what it is? Well, I'm glad you asked, even though I can't hear you. So, the method is right here. Let's... Are you gonna get a close up? Oh, okay. So, the idea is that you want to take two uh, two blocks of wood or scrap wood 
and put them on top and screw them on top of uh, the of one of the joists. And the idea is that if you do it this way, when you put this on the side of a wall of the of the beams, you're not going to have to account for flushness because it's already flush. If you have this block of wood on top of this beam and you put it on top on the top of this joist and then you put it next to this beam, it's already going to be flush by itself. And you don't have to worry about doing any like like calibrations that you might have to do with this contraption. This by itself is already flush and you can use this as a guide. to knock the hanger. Of course, uh, when you do this, you need to make sure that it's straight this way. But when you do, it works quite well. All right, so this is gonna be temporary actually because this is not aligned with the 16 spa inch spacing. But we're actually using screws to secure this temporarily. Usually they recommend nails for the strength that they provide. But in our case, we're using screws because if you use a nail and you end up knocking it in the wrong place or you don't knock it in straight, you're gonna have to end up prying it out. So we're using screws because They fit our purposes. But that's not all the way in. We want to be able to take this screw out in particular because, uh, like I said, this is temporary. But also because this is not a perfect job, so if we end up making mistakes, we want to be we want to be able to undo them. All right, so let's talk about screws. Usually they don't recommend screws for uh, purposes like this because screws usually aren't strong enough or they don't provide the same shear strength that nails do. So for our purposes, we're actually using a special type of screw. Usually you use these types of screws for wood purposes, wood screws. But for our purposes with the joist hanger, we're using these. These are construction screws or structural screws. Right here it says they're strong drive exterior grade galvanized screws. And at first glance, you might not see a difference with the screws. And that's because you're not looking at the most important part. And also uh, they, have, they have different material, but the most important part is their caps. This right here is shaped like a bowl and has a wide brim right here. Whereas this screw right here has a, has a cap that allows it to pop out. And what I mean by this is, for example, if you look at this screw right here, if this piece of rebar ever moved, this screw would easily pop out. Whereas a screw like this one, which has a wide brim, would not be likely to be popped out. So aside from the material differences between these screws, this screw is also very good at staying in. The difference might not have been clearer with these screws, but these two screws definitely show a difference. Right here, we have lag screws, which are normally used to fasten things to, uh, to joists. And here we have this replacement structural screw. And this is the box for it. You can see that this replacement screw, not only is it thinner, but it also looks like you can self drive it in. Which means, what I mean by this is that in order to, to, to insert the screw, you have to pre drill a hole. Whereas with this screw, you can just drill it in by itself. Additionally, you can also see the wide brim on this structural screw that I was talking about earlier with this screw. This one has a very wide brim that prevents it from being popped out. And these screws, in fact, they're actually 
then for fixing these to the uh, fi uh to the ledger so we're we're I mentioned in the previous video that this beam right here is called a ledger and, or a header and that's because it is fixed to the side of the house or in our case the railroad ties. So what we what would we normally do is we take one of these screws and we would secure it we would secure this ledger beam to the railroad tie or the side of the house using these screws. All right, so now is my opportunity to test it out in the field. I have my screws right here. I'm going to make sure that it's aligned. As you can see, we have the pencil marks lined up with the uh, joist. Now I'm going to take my trusty hammer. Uh, Burton, you might want to stand back for this one. Just in case, I knocked it a ton, of, uh, way more than I needed to. But it doesn't matter that I knocked the beam out of the way because it's already locked in place. We're going to take our structural screw. These are self-driving, so we don't have to pre-drill a hole. Burton, you're blocking the camera. Woo. Let me just make sure it's flush. Uh, I do believe that that is flush. Just making sure before I put the second screw in. Uh, take a look at that. that I, I do believe that is flush. We're going to take the second screw. We don't have to knock this side in because we already have it. Because the point of that pin was only to temporarily secure it while we put the screw in. So we don't have to knock it in again. We just have to put the screw on. place now the ultimate test for this is to take off this um template beam and put an actual beam on and see if it is flush all right i, I take that back my dad just told me to uh take off this uh top scrap wood uh you know <laughs> which i personally disagree with because disagree with because uh this way it's, it's going to be flush anyway but uh to each their own and let me just move this in as you can see wait this, this is not going to be a good uh measurement uh but as you can see it's extremely flush with the top side of the uh, beam and uh yeah it's, it's pretty straight yeah just about and you know now i'm realizing that the issue isn't so much the precision of the contraption but the fact that the wood that we're using for the joists themselves they aren't precise like it's supposed to be two by eight right it might be one and a half inch or it might be one in three eighths of an inch. I suppose the uh, the width doesn't matter actually. It's much more the uh, the height that matters. So something. So for example, this might be. Uh, if, if you look at these two, this one is clearly a bit taller than this one, which means that when we're trying to make sure that they're flush with the beam and you're using the same contraption, they're not both going to be flush. And this can be chalked up to the fact that they're both exterior grade wood. One of them might be seven and a half inches and the other one might be seven and three eighths of an inch. However, if you're, using, if you're using interior gray wood, you might get more precision and that con this contraption might actually work. But for now, our method of using a beam that just has two blocks of wood on top of it that guarantees that it's flush works the best for us. All right, so we have the joist hanger secured. The next step is to secure the joist. And in order to do this, you're going to look at the joist hanger and you're going to notice that there are these small little holes that are poking out the side of the joist hanger. And in these holes are supposed to go 
uh, screws that are angled sort of this way. And these screws have to be long enough so that they penetrate into the beam. So, you know, you could use uh, a three inch long one, but in our case, I think this two and a half inch one will work just fine. So, we're just going to insert it and bombs away. here I just want to mention that if you're using nails it is infinitely easier because you can just angle it and then just just pop it in and I just want to bring this up because we've had this for uh, quite a while now we've actually done a video on this Banks nail gun go check it out it has a, a few uh, uh, views on it I'm pretty proud of that video so go check it out I'll put it in the link down in the description below but if you're using a nail gun it's infinitely more easier than using screws. All right, so that's it for this video. I'm Maimon, and today I talked to you about how to put a joist hanger on and the strategies that we use to make sure that the joist hanger is flush and, and put in the right position. In our next video, I'm gonna talk about securing the these double joists with these special screws and also securing the floor to, or the, the ledger beam to railroad ties, or in your case, sides of the house, but in our case, the railroad ties. But for now, I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on Ayan Ayman, especially our videos on the conversion of our patio to a multi-purpose room. Sorry about any mis, um, mistakes I made during this video, I just got uh, my, vaccinated, so I might be stumbling over myself, but I had fun doing this video. So I'm Ayman, and signing out.